Hello YouTube world and welcome back to my workshop. This week the project I'm going to do is a burnt ash bowl. Ash does lend itself very nicely to this because of the configuration of the grain. Um, plus, I've got a lot of ash. One of my neighbours, he's got, I don't know whether you call it a very large garden or a small estate. But he got uh, about three woods in his garden, small woods. Um, in one of them there was a ash tree, quite a mature ash tree had come down and it's been down for about five years and when I approached him and said to him about it he said that I could go in and help myself. Now I thought when I started wood turning that all you had to do was get a tree, slice a chunk off the end, turn it into a bowl. It's that easy. Unfortunately that's not quite how it works. If you cut a log off of a tree normally what happens as it dries it will split like you can see from this one that this was a tree you can see the outer bark there's the outer bark on there and you have the cambrian layer underneath and then you come through and if you look through to the to the center of the tree all right there you go um you can see there's the, that's the center of the tree there. And you see all these radial splits coming out all over the place. And that's what happens when you cut the log and dry it out. So what you end up having to do is get the tree trunk and slice it along the grain. And that is then what you end up with, a piece of wood like this. You see the configuration of the grain running this way? So the tree would have actually been growing up that way. And so what I, what I did was um, cut it up into about four foot lengths, sliced it through, brought it back, put it in the garden. It's been under tarpaulin for about two years. Uh, and so now it's nice and dry, just ready to use. I have to say ash is lovely wood to turn. It's soft enough that it turns well, but it's quite hard. You get a very nice finish off of it. It seems to me the harder the wood, the better the finish. You get stuff like walnut. Yew is another one. Yew, you get a lovely finish off that. Walnut is a beautiful finish. Um, but as I say, the ash is lovely grain running through it. It does chuck up some really nice patterns. It is nice wood to work with. So what I'm going to do this week, I've already roughed this down to let it dry out a little bit more. So as you can see, I've turned it into the actual bowl shape already. I've got a tenon on the back. I'll turn that off. And that will be the bowl in there. And then what I intend to do is get a blowtorch and then just very lightly scorch it. And what it will do is highlight all of that lovely grain running through there. So, sit tight and enjoy the ride. So what I'm going to do now is just hollow the bowl out on this side. Uh, just until we've got nice uniform thickness on the wall. And the inside of the bowl should mirror the outside curve on there. So we get a nice, nice shaped fruit bowl. The other thing I always like to do, just as a safety measure, is I always like to keep a centre. That's the life centre that revolves is on bearings. And I do like to keep it up just for safety. So that piece of wood there is squeezed in between the two of them. And if anything should happen, it's not really going to go anywhere. Alright, so let's start turning some wood. The lathe that I'm using is a Record Nova. DVR XP. I bought this second hand and I've got to say it's a brilliant lathe. It does everything I want it to do. I bought an Axminster lathe when I first started. Uh, very quickly outgrew it. Um, the more technical stuff you try to do, uh, the more you need. This one has, as I say, everything I need. Um, I'm all eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed. This, 
when I brought it into the garage I actually dropped it I tried to patch that up with a bit of milliput and a bit of gaffer tape I managed to buy a new digital readout I don't think you can see that so we've got a digital readout in here it tells me my speeds I've got pre-programmed there's four pre-programmed speeds that I can put in there uh, there's probably more if I was clever enough to do it and the other thing is as a spindle lock on the top there so if you lift that and turn it and then that locks that in place and then that leaves that let it turn and the other thing it has inside of there it's very difficult to see you have what they call an indexing plate so you can lock that in there lift it up turn it lock it in and lock it in again so there's I believe there's 36 divisions on the back of there so you could actually use that if you wanted to mark it for any reason into four six uh, you can just by using that indexing plate you can just move it around as I say the other thing that this will do I have an ink rigger that will come around there the tool rest will sit in there because obviously when you do a wood turn and you're restricted by the size of the fold that you can turn that's the center of the lathe and that's the bed of the lathe so you can't turn bowls much bigger than that I'm not sure what size that is that's 13 I think what I can turn on there is about that's 8 inches 200 mil so I could go to just under 16 inch bowl on there but what it allows you to do is you flick that round there pull that round and the whole of the headstock turns and then that come around that can come around there and you then have from the center there down to there which is 17 inches so you could now go to a 34 inch bowl which would be a who said I think you'd struggle to find a bit of wood that big to be honest that's a quick rundown of my lathe as I say it's a lovely bit of kit I do enjoy using it uh, does everything that I want it to and uh, should the man from record be watching this I managed to buy a new digital reading but I couldn't for some reason buy a new cover so if the man from record ever does watch this perhaps you'd like to send me another cover for it just to save all the dust falling in there right then wood tubers enough for the chit chat let's turn some wood got my power cap
turning and try not to get in the way of the camera. Do not make very good combinations. Uh, what I'm trying to do here, I want to leave the tail stock up as long as I can to support the wood. This with a bowl this size, this does it will flex as you're cutting it. So what I'm trying to do is leave as much meat as possible in the middle um, and turn all this outside away. And then what I do afterwards is I'll just remove the tail stock and I just turn the centre out. So I want to get that down pretty much as close as I can and then just clean all that up as I go. You can see in this clip I've moved the camera around to the side because the angle that I'm trying to turn the wood at, my arm kept getting in the way of the camera. If you look, you can see the line of the cut, and what I'm doing is using doing a series of. Here I'm doing some pull cuts, so I'm starting from the middle, going out to the outside of the bowl, and then here I'm doing a push cut from the outside of the bowl into the middle. And there you can see the line on the wood. Again, where I'm starting in the middle and working my way to the outside of the bowl. See on that when I started down, I'm trying to take the thickness of the wall from the outside rim, taking the thickness of the wall of the bowl down, and that. You can see my body movement, you do that all in one movement. As I said before, a bowl of that size, it does flex and it will try to move away. If you try to take a, a too bigger cut, it will actually bend away from the tool. So what you want to do is try and leave as much wood to support in the middle of the bowl to try and support it as you cut it. What I'm doing here is I'm just checking the thickness of the wall. I do have various calipers and things like that, but as I'm demonstrating there, you can't beat the uh, your finger and thumb. You know exactly from your finger and thumb how thick that wall is. The as I say, you have all sorts of different types of calipers you can use to do for checking it. But your finger and thumb probably is the best one to use if you can get rain with it. Right, so what I've done now is I've taken the tail stock away. Um, I'm just checking the chuck, make sure I've got a good grip on the back of the tenon on the back of the bowl. And then I'm now going to start turning the centre out. For this, I'm using a half inch bowl gauge. The difference I think um, English we measure ours across the gap and the Americans measure the thickness of the steel. But this does give you a much clearer picture of what I'm doing. So again, I'm taking down the thickness of the wall. I'm taking that sweep round all in one movement.
obviously if you turn in a fruit bowl you want something that's quite aesthetically pleasing uh, you want the fruit to sit in there nicely for one thing but you also want to try and keep the, the wood a uniform thickness so as I said at the beginning of the program you really want it to try and mi mirror the inside of the bowl to mirror the outside so what I'm doing now is I'm just roughing out the centre of the wood again that's with a series of pull cuts and push cuts Okay, so that's, that's pretty much there now. Uh, I'll sand all that down, and the good thing about torching it is the torching actually takes a lot of the roughness out of it. So I'll just sand it down to about 240, uh, maybe 320. Just clean most of that up, and the edge is over, and then we get to torching. Me saying in it, you can come back and have a look at it when I've finished. Oh, there's Charlie Dog putting an appearance. Just come down to see me. Charlie's rescue dog. We've had her, she's about 13 now, and we had her since she was about four. A lovely dog. Very good with the grandchildren. Very obedient. Very unpredictable wearing other dogs, unfortunately. I do tell people she's like all the other women in my life. She's bad tempered and unpredictable. And it doesn't matter how many times I've said that to my wife, she still doesn't find it funny for some reason. There we go. She's getting on a bit. She pops down every now and again just to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, when all that sawdust gets carried back through the house, I blame it on the dog then. As you can see, I've got the bowl turned upside down on the bed of the lathe, ready to torch it. The only torch I've got a, a butane blowtorch and you don't want the blowtorch turned up too high uh, because we're just trying to scorch the wood we're not actually burning it obviously the if you have it turned up too high it's just going to blacken it which is not what we want because we still want the actual whiteness in between the um In between the growth rings to show. Uh, what I think is it, it, quite often you're using the blowtorch a bit like a paintbrush and you can see here it's go, just going through and you have the dark winter rings and then you have the light 
wider summer rings or growth rings in between and it's the, those dark winter rings that burns first and you see here it's just gently highlighting them I've seen people use techniques on here where they really have burnt and then rubbed it back down with a wire brush which does just it gives it a very nice texture as well but that's not what I'm aiming for here I'm just aiming to highlight the grain in the wood so what I'm going to do now is just gradually work my way around the bowl just gently scorching the grain just trying to keep a nice even burn all the way around Another thing I would say to anybody doing this is, for is, is to get quite a uniform burn on it. Another thing I would say to anybody is if you're doing this, do have a fire extinguisher handy. Because you're obviously using naked flame with uh, a lot of sawdust and wood lying about. I'm just going to work my way around the bowl now, around the bottom of the bowl and on the sides. Just, I've got the torch turned down really low and I'll just work my way around, just gently highlighting the grain on there. Don't want to rush it, don't want to ruin it. Just take it nice and gently and go for a nice finish. I didn't see this when I selected this piece of wood, but you can actually see now where I'm torching that, it's actually highlighting all the cracks coming out. You see at the um, very bottom where those cracks radiate from, this piece of wood was cut from very close to the central pith of the tree, which has caused all those cracks to form around there. That's where the wood's drying out. I'm just going to finish off the outside of the bowl now and then turn it over and we'll give it inside. There we go, all done. What we'll do now, we'll put it back on the lathe, we'll just give it a quick sand down, uh, and then we'll put some sand and sealer and some wax on that, and it should turn up really nice. So I've given that two coats of sand and sealer, sanded it down in between with uh, some 320 grit. As you see, they're starting to get quite a nice shine on there already. So, and they've been used. Some Hampshire Sheen gloss finish wax, just to finish that off. I like to put it on the lathe static to start with so that you can work it right into the grain. Then a little bit more on the cloth.
can see that shine coming on there already now. You see the reflection of my hand and the paper in there. And a really nice gloss finish. Clean bit of cloth, just to buff that off, buff that up. need to reverse chuck that and take my chucking point off but there it is let's shine on that a nice ash burnt pole well there we go YouTube world that's it finished There it is, all finished. There's a bow. They could grace any sideboard in the world. Burnt, nice and shiny. All the grain highlighted. And all finished. Very nice. Nice project to do. Nice project to look at. Nice that it's finished. So that's been another project for me. Uh, if you have liked it, please subscribe. Uh, the more subscribers I get, the it does give me more encouragement because I know that people are enjoying it. So if you want to subscribe, it means you want to look at it again. So thank you very much for that. So I've been Steve Howe. And I've had another great day in the workshop. So, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Well, I hope somebody's going to clean all this mess up.